Hello, I'm Tony Stolstus, and welcome to How to Read the Bible Like a Human Being. In this study, we're going to do something completely different. We're going to focus on using our emotional brains to study scripture instead of our rational minds. And there's a whole world out there of smells and sights and experiences and what the characters were feeling and thinking that we can explore that will bring a whole new dimension to your Bible study. So what's our goal? The overall goal in studying the Bible like a human being is to know Jesus. So one way to explain that is by what we're not going to do. We're not going to talk about theology and we're not going to talk about life application. So, oh my gosh, we're apostate from the beginning. But there's a reason we don't do those things. Theology and application are rational brain pursuits. You think about those things with your rational mind. And we're trying to use a different part of our brain, a less familiar part of our brain. So we're going to just set that aside for the moment. It doesn't mean doctrine is bad and application is bad, for heaven's sakes. Every Christian should study good doctrine. Every Christian should want to apply scripture to your personal behavior. But for this study, we're going to set those aside temporarily to focus on this other area that's less known. So one of the implications of that is if in this study you start waxing philosophical about the deeper doctrinal meanings of things or you get off in a tangent about application, part of your facilitator's job is to pull you back to the, to the main goal. We're going to talk about visualization and identification and experience. So why do this? What, what's the reason for setting aside the application and the theology to focus on this emotional brain thing? Well, a real simple explanation is this. We study scripture to renew our minds. Romans 12 says to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. So we want that renewing. Rational study of the Bible renews your rational mind. Emotional study of the Bible with your emotional brain renews your emotional mind. So if you only study the Bible rationally, if you're only thinking about what to believe and how to behave when you're studying the Bible, you're studying it with half a brain. <laughs> so you end up being a half brain Christian. And the way you can tell a half brain Christian is you know what to do, but you can't do it. And the reason for that is your rational brain tells you what to do. It's the repository of sound doctrine. It's the place with the steering wheel. It sets your course. But your emotional brain is what provides the energy, the passion, the drive to get that done. So if you've only engaged Jesus rationally and you don't consistently know how to engage him emotionally, through, especially through the word, you'll end up as sort of a half-brain Christian. And at least for my generation, that's part of our heritage is we've learned how to be rational, but not how to be visual or how to identify with people. So that's what we're going to do. So how do you study the Bible with your emotional brain? Well, I just mentioned two of the keys. Visualization is one. The rational brain learns from words and concepts. The emotional brain learns from images and experiences. So when you pick up your Bible, what do you see? Is it filled with words and concepts or is it filled with pictures? Well, unfortunately, they took all the pictures out of the Bible after we graduated from elementary school. So your emotional brain learns through imagery. So we need to fill in some of the missing pictures that, that aren't in the Bible, that couldn't be written down in words. They're still there. When Jesus was on a boat in the Sea of Galilee, he felt the, the boat rocking in the waves. He could taste the tang of the, the marshes on the edges of the lake. He could feel the rough wood under his fingers. Those things were all there. They just weren't written down. So we're going to explore some of those sensory things that weren't written down in order to get our emotional brains going. Second tool that we're going to use is identification. So if your emotional brain learns through image and experience, the pictures give us the image. 
how do we get the experience? Well, you, we can do that vicariously. We, we try to get into, you know, the disciples are in the boat before the stilling of the storm. There's this howling wind singing in the ropes and spray is coming over the bow and the boat's filling up with water and Matthew is bailing frantically with this little bucket. Um, what's he feeling in that moment? Save us, Master, for we're perishing. He thinks he's going to die. <laughs> um, one just key little fact there is most people in ancient times didn't know how to swim. So the fishermen did. But it's very likely that the majority of the disciples couldn't swim. And they're out in the middle of the night in a boat, probably miles from shore, in the dark, and they can't swim. So we want to think about how that would impact us emotionally. And oftentimes we can come up with a, an experience that we've had, like the first time that I went to swimming classes, they taught us the dead man's float. And I can remember thinking, you know, at like six years old, why the heck are they teaching us how to drown? <laughs> but that feeling we can bring to scripture and say, oh, my experience was like their experience. So I get them. I understand and that's a picture of how your emotional brain understands things. And this is so important because when you know with your head and you know with your heart, then you can move in confidence and in faith. If you only know with your head but not with your heart, when the chips are down, you're going to be freaking out. So we'll visualize what happens, we'll explore what the characters are thinking and feeling and try to identify with them. And our third major element is story. And one interesting thing you'll notice about these studies is that the only passages we cover are the ones where something happens. So like if Jesus is preaching for a long time, we don't look at those passages because nothing happens. There's nothing to visualize. He's just sitting there teaching. So we only study the stories, the story parts of, in this case, the Gospel of Mark. And we write stories to help us understand what those people were thinking and feeling. So the third week of every study, we each pick a character. You can pick whoever you want. And we take one hour and we try to get into that person and write what they experienced in the Bible study. And it's incredibly insightful, and it will help you identify with these people in a much deeper way. So that's the, the last step of our process. Let me go through the process really quickly. Um, you'll start in the first week of any study. Each study lasts three weeks. We'll get some historical and cultural background. So there are several pages of background information in your workbook that will give you some valuable context. We also have a setting video that was shot on location in Israel where you can see where these things happen. So you'll get that context. Then you'll spend two weeks, two sessions, discussing the passage. And it's going to be all discussion. What you learn is because you thought and you wrestled with it and you tried to envision in your mind. No one's going to spoon feed this stuff to you because adults don't learn well that way. So there's no teaching in this curriculum. If your teacher starts, you know, doing the talking head thing up front, um, you can hold them accountable to ask questions instead. The same way that they'll hold you accountable to not get off on theological flights of fancy. But we're not here to, to teach and listen passively. We're here to activate our minds and explore and discuss. So we got two weeks of that. Then on the third week, we do the narratives. And you know, the idea of writing for some people is a little scary, but we've removed all the crappy parts. Um, what you do is you write your narrative and you set a timer for one hour. And that's whenever the hour's up, you're done. It doesn't matter if the story is finished. And then we share them by reading them to each other. So it doesn't matter if you've misspelled every other word, if you're, you know, never grammar checked it, if you don't have the right paragraph marks, all those things your English teachers dinged you for don't matter. You're just going to write. And then as long as you can read your own writing, you're good. So those narratives for a lot of people are the high point of the whole study because you really get into someone and feel what they felt and think what they thought. 
So that's our process. Again, this will stretch your mind and, and you'll, it'll take you a bit to get into this way of thinking. But once you do, what you'll experience is the, the best part of scripture study is when a verse comes alive. What that is, is you've known it with your mind, but suddenly your emotional brain catches up and then you know it at a much deeper level. That's what that experience is. And this kind of study is designed to produce that over and over and over again, that you have those moments where scripture comes alive. So I think you're going to like it.